Hey folks, in this video we're going to look at how you can do stoichiometry with a mole roadmap. There is no clever joke, so let's just get going. Um, we got a few objectives, and those are for you to be able to use the mole roadmap for stoichiometry, and then feel like you are really dope awesome sauce at stoichiometry. So, now, a sweet mole roadmap. Let's take a look at this. This dude is a mole roadmap that is specifically for use with uh, stoichiometry problems. So it's helpful with we can identify what are known substances and the unknown substance we're trying to find out about and then we can use this dude if we... let's just use it in action. Let's see how it works. Some practice with it, yeah? So we have a problem, very standard stoichiometry problem. How many grams of aluminum oxide can be produced from 1.09 moles of aluminum? And here's a balanced equation to go along. Well, let's bust out that mole roadmap. <sighs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the known substance, what is the unknown substance? Well, I'm told, yo, 1.09 moles of ale. I know 1.09 moles of ale. So aluminum is my known, and I'm asked about aluminum oxide. How many gram aluminum oxide? So that dude's going to be my unknown, because I want to know about it. Hmm, <clears throat> great. So now I can figure out where I'm starting with, with my known. I've got moles of aluminum, so I'm going to be starting with moles of aluminum. I'm going to start right here. And I want to get to grams of aluminum oxide, so I'm going to get to mass. The gra mass is grams. Um, so I'm going from here to here. So I'm going to do that in one step. Step one, change from moles to, I guess, I'll go from moles to moles. That's what I'm doing. If I'm going to get to there, i got to go this way. And then my second step, I'm going to go up here. i got to follow this arrow. So I'm going to use the uh, molar mass, I guess, which is one mole for the molar mass. And that'll change my moles to mass. Um, so great. I got my first step. Use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. I got my second step. I'm going to need the molar mass. And that'll be the molar mass for aluminum oxide. Let's get cracking. All right, so uh, step one. Um, I'm going to change those moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide. You get confused, just rewind back to that mole map and our whole plan. And so I'm going to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So, all right, aluminum and aluminum oxide. I can say four aluminum equals two aluminum oxide. Or if I wanted to be really cool, I would use the units. I'm changing from moles to moles. Here's the cool abbreviation. So I'll say four moles of aluminum equals two moles of aluminum oxide. Cool. So I have a conversion factor. I can set this up as a fraction with the new units. That's aluminum oxide, right? Yeah, the new units are going to go up top. The old units down below, those in the basement where you don't care about them with all that radon. Um, and so we're going to multiply the number I want to change by this. So I'm changing my moles of aluminum to aluminum oxide. So I'll do 1.09 times this fraction. That's going to give me an answer of 0 0.54 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, I changed my moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide. I can move on to step two. Um, so step two, I'm going to change those moles of aluminum oxide, these guys, to grams of aluminum oxide. And so according to that mole roadmap, we're going to use the molar mass. So I've got the molar mass of aluminum oxide. They show us that however many grams equals one mole. That's the way we can use molar mass. And so I'm going to set this up in my fraction. I want to have grams as my new unit, so I'll put the grams up top. The one mole of aluminum oxide, my old unit, down below. I multiply this by moles of aluminum oxide, which I solved for previously. So I'll plug that boy in, do some multiplication, and I got a real cool answer. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, let's check out uh, another problem. Oh, maybe you're feeling like this dog right now. Or fantastic. Maybe are you feeling like the snake? Well, after this next problem, hopefully you're totally feeling like that morph dog. Let's look at it. More practice. Now I want to say, all right, here's another problem. Oh, man, this one's spicy. We've got liters up in here. We've got 89 liters of O2 at STP can react with how many grams? All right, well, let's pull up that map again. All right, what is the known thing? We know we've got a number of liters of O2. So I'm going to say O2 is my known stuff. And I'm asking how many grams of aluminum. The aluminum is going to be my unknown. So I'm starting with 89 liters. That's a, that's a volume. I'm starting with 89 liters of O2. And I'm going to make my way to grams of AL. That would be mass. Again, mass is grams. So I'm going to travel from here all the way to here. I'm going to have to do this in three steps. Step one, I'll change from volume O2, I'm in O2 land, to moles of O2. And then I'll change from moles of O2 to moles of AL. And then I'll change from moles of AL to 
grams of AL. And so first I'll use this conversion factor, one mole equals 22 liters at STP. Oh, that, that's convenient. And then I'll use the coefficients in my balanced chemical equation. And then I'll use the molar mass. And now that's going to be the molar mass of aluminum because our unknown substance B is aluminum. All right, so three steps. Let's, uh, let's put those in motion. So step one, I'm going to be changing from liters of O2 to moles of O2. I'm using that conversion factor of one mole equals 22 for liters. Well, uh, liters are my old unit. I want to put those in the denominator. Moles are my new unit. I'm going to put one mole in my numerator of my fraction. I'm going to multiply that by my liters of O2, 89. So we'll do 89 times 1 divided by 22.4. Give me 3.97 moles of O2. Cool. So I'm uh, ready for step 2. Step 2, I'm changing my moles of O2 to moles of aluminum. And I'm going to use the coefficients for my balanced chemical equation. So I know 4 moles of aluminum will equal 3 moles of O2. And let's see, moles of aluminum are the unit I want, so this will go in my numerator, and moles of O2 are the old stuff, this will go in the denominator, down in the basement with the radon where we don't care about it. Um, cool, so, and I want to multiply moles of O2, so I'm going to take this dude from my last step, and multiply that by 4, divide by 2, sorry, divide by 3, and that's going to give me 5.29 moles of aluminum. Great, step 3, I'm going to change my moles of aluminum to grams of aluminum, I'm going to use the molar mass. That's the molar mass of aluminum. So it's here we've got my molar mass. I'm going to put the grams up top because those are the new units. I'm going to put my moles down below because that's what I'm getting rid of. I can do my maths and sweet, that comes out to 5. Point, oh, I'm sorry. I just take the the <laughs> sorry. I want to use my moles of aluminum that I had to change the grams, so I'm going to take this moles of aluminum from the last step, multiply that into my by my fraction, and sweet, that gives me the total grams of aluminum. Hot sauce. So I feel like, or I hope you feel like you're dope slash awesome sauce slash whatever adjectives you like. Um, feeling really good about stoichiometry with that mole roadmap. Um, if you want to see more practice problems, let me know in the comments, and uh, have a great rest of your life. Ta-ta!